Hey, Joe, thanks for joining us today. As a way to get started, give us a little background on yourself. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I appreciate you having me on today. And as a longtime follower, I guess, uh, you know, I picked up so many nuggets of wisdom over the years, and I'm both excited and humbled to be on with you today and uh, and hopefully contribute by sharing a little bit of my story. So so in terms of my background, um, I've been in sales and sales leadership for the better part of 20 years, uh, primarily in very highly technical spaces. Telecom network engineering is where I got my started, uh, got myself started, and then uh, cybersecurity a little bit later. Um, other than a short stint working for one of the big four consulting firms, uh, I have worked primarily for early stage startups. Uh, so that brings uh, some unique experiences, which I'm happy to share today. And uh, most recently, I've been the chief revenue officer for uh, an early stage company that's involved in software testing. Um, and I'm actually, actually, I'm in the process of um, launching kind of a fractional CRO uh, type of, uh, type of uh, business. Um, on a personal note, I, I live here in the D.C. area, Washington, D.C. It's kind of uh, my home and where I've grown up. I've got three kids, and, and just for fun, I recently discovered, rediscovered, my appreciation of mountain biking. And I can tell you I've had some calamitous wipeouts. Um, luckily, no worse for the wear, uh, but, uh, but at, at 50 years old, um, I, don't, I don't heal as fast as I once did. Yeah. Well, let's start with that finance background, because I've had a string of great salespeople with finance backgrounds, which until doing the podcast, I never met anybody with a finance background that got into sales. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So so this is a bit of a weird thing about me, I think. Um, and and, and I, I'd like to think that it has contributed to sort of uh, my superpowers, if I want to ever think that I've got any. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, so as a as a kid, I was kind of a math and science uh, uh, kid. I was very focused on sort of physics and chemistry. And, and this is no exaggeration. Um, I drove my parents crazy in every possible way. Uh, they my parents were immigrants uh, to the U.S., uh, they worked super hard to like, you know, get us nice things and toys and gadgets and everything like that, and would be so dismayed that the moment I got any sort of a gift, I would immediately take it apart and try to figure out how it worked. And so, so that sort of figuring out how stuff works and, you know, kind of, you know, the, the, the math and engineering behind it uh, sort of drove me into finance. It, it's weird. It's weird that I wound up as a finance major. There were some reasons at the time that made sense. I naturally should have gravitated towards engineering. And it's and it's kind of, um, I think it's an interesting story because despite having a finance background, I gravitated towards very technical industries and and, and very engineering heavy solutions. Um, but, but the finance background is, I think it's been really helpful, particularly in selling and helping customers to, you know, formulate their buying decisions, you know, use a very structured and mathematical approach coming up with, you know, good ROI metrics and, and, and strong business justifications and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's been, it's been good. Well, if you look at it, <clears throat> finance is really the, <clears throat> the engineering of business. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're spot on about that. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's, and it's funny actually, because, and, and look, I mean, most of what I've sold, and I think this is probably the case for a lot of your listeners as well. We're selling complicated solutions to major enterprises. There's competing budgets. They're trying to figure out, like, do I invest my limited pool of money into this or that? You've got to have a strong story. Uh, and the numbers uh, convey a very strong story, particularly if you're, help if you're helping them to save money or if you're helping them to, you know, uh, get more money, grow faster, that type of thing. But what was it like getting into sales? Because you have to deal with people and people are kind of the opposite of numbers, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so spot on. Yeah, it's, it's so. It, I, I feel like I feel like it's so uh, it's so unlikely that I wound up in this in a sales role, right? Because and I I was a numbers guy, uh, absolutely. Um, but but what's I think what's at the heart of it for me, and and really what drew me into it is that I was a natural problem solver. So I liked understanding oh, yes. a problem, and so you know, understanding a problem has a lot of different layers to it. You need to understand, like, what you know, what's what's the technical problem to be solved? Is it is it some something engineering wise, something computational? But then there's the people that are involved, and getting to know the people that are involved in that solving that problem, building relationships with them, understanding what drives them, and 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 really kind of pulling them together to a common purpose. Those were skills that I had as a as a finance person um, that really translated 100% into, into assuming sales and eventually sales leadership roles. Yeah. And, and was it the, 
the problem solution that motivated you or was it financial? Was it both? Was it? Yeah. So this is, this is again, maybe revealing a little bit of a little bit about my twisted uh, DNA over here. So, so for some reason, and I, I, this has been a curse and a blessing. I have, have always been drawn to like doing hard stuff and working on hard, hard things. In fact, the, one of the, one of the first roles I had in cybersecurity, I was interviewing with the CEO and he was transparent. The guy was brilliant. And he was explaining how difficult it was to sell this product, how far ahead of the industry it was, how it was using a type of math that no one even existed, or nobody even believed was, was fully valid. It hadn't been vetted. And the company had only had a couple of customers. And upon hearing that, rather than being like, oh my gosh, this is mission impossible, what am I doing? I was like, oh my God, it's gonna feel so good when I figure out how to crack the nut and help this company go to market, right? And, and that's to, to go back to your question, um, there is this burning desire to take on something hard uh, and, and figure out how to make it successful for the company, for the people, you know, kind of bring it together and, and not just sell it, but, but also sort of see it through to its, to its conclusion, you know, where it delivers the actual business value. Well, I like that mindset because I see too many people today looking for the tips or tricks mindset where it's like, what's the, the, the cheat code? To get the meeting what's the cheat code to get the executive to want to buy this it's, it's not a cheat code it's a problem you got to solve the problem and it, it's not just you know hit the f9 key there's a <laughs> there's a process to it there's many steps there's a skill to it i just yeah. don't see a lot of people looking at it that way yeah, that's. I mean, and it's 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 interesting. I mean, and, and I think as as people, right, we always want to try to find the the quick hack, life hack, you know, that that'll kind of get us there. And and those things do exist. I mean, there's you know there's there's shortcuts, and you can certainly learn by you know going through your own experiences or even spotting the experiences of somebody else. But but you know, for for some of the stuff, like you really you have to be ready to get your hands dirty. And I think in terms of you know some of the things that have helped me to be you know successful. Um, you know, throughout my career, it's, it's really paying attention to the details. It's being aware that, you know, someone is trusting you with a decision, you know, they are picking you uh, when they could have picked others. And, and really when it comes to, to winning the deals uh, and, and um, you know, helping your company to grow, irrespective of, of whatever it is that you're selling, I think if you keep that foundation uh, and that sort of thought uh, kind of as your North Star, I'm, I'm, I'm solving a problem. I'm helping someone or some company to meet an objective. They're counting on me. Um, you know, we need to see it through to make sure that they're successful. We'll grow, they'll grow, all that kind of stuff. It's, and it, it is kind of a win-win um, mentality and, and, and a mentality, I think, that, um, that values abundance rather than scarcity. Like there is a way to create these, these win-wins. Uh, and I think, I think you've just got to find it. Yeah. And how did you learn sales? So I had, I was very fortunate. So I had a few early mentors in my career that really helped me to take problem solving skills and make them a little bit more generic and marketable. And, um, and, you know, one, one of those guys uh, really, I mean, he's a, he's a close friend and has, has continued to be a mentor to me. Um, it was, it was about, you know, how do you, how do you engage in a way that, that makes people feel comfortable, right? That makes people, and, I, and I've heard you talk about this, Brian, as well as your guests, like, to me, that makes people want to meet with you. Like, what are you bringing to the meeting? Like, it's it's one thing to say, like, you know, I, I think people say like, hey, I know this guy or I know that guy. No, it's, it's who knows you, right? I mean, that's that's kind of what it comes down to. Who could you call up that'll be like, oh yeah. Like I, I talked to Joe two years ago on something else, but I like the guy, like I, I, I bring him back in for some other meeting, right? And that's, that's where you, you're just constantly looking for areas that you can add a little bit of value uh, as you engage with, with contacts that, and, and, and really customers, but, but eventually they're, they're business partners, right? I mean, these are so many of my customers over the years, um, you know, have, have, have uh, evolved into professional friendships, right? And where you can, you know, companies change, roles change, all that kind of stuff, but you remain in contact because you, you share a common connection. And how did you develop that skill? Because that typically doesn't go along with the finance thing because it's just, yeah. the answer's right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound like I'm splitting hairs here a little bit. And so earlier in my career, I started on the accounting track and accounting 
had way too many rules for me. Like it was like there was there was no gray area. Like when when confronted with this business problem or this type of a transaction, there's only one way to do it. And and I I liked finance because it seemed a little bit more creative. It seemed like it left more space for that. Um, and and the interpersonal dynamics. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd have to say like, and it's it's weird. It's weird how you grow and you evolve. Twenty five years ago, I would have considered myself to probably be a little bit introverted. Um, and, and now I probably uh, lean more towards being a little bit extroverted. And, and I, think, I think when you challenge yourself and put yourself in situations where you're forced to try new things and grow, I mean, it's, it's where the growth always happens, like, you know, in, in whatever, whatever self-help uh, sort of discipline, um, it, it, it always happens in those uncomfortable spaces. And so I think, I think, I think it just, I learned it, picked it up, um, you know, saw it modeled by others and, and sort of incorporated the stuff that, uh, that, that seemed most consistent with my own personality. And why startups? What, what did you like about startups? Yeah. So I liked, and again, this kind of comes to the creativity aspect of it. You know, so I've worked for a couple of big companies. They were very process oriented. You know, when this happens, you do this, there's a playbook and, and there's, look, as scaling a business, I believe in playbooks. I think you have to have those things. You have to build that that rigor and that discipline. I like the initial, like let's get in and figure it out. Let's like we don't we don't have all the answers yet. Let's experiment a little bit. Uh, let's see what it looks like to go to market in this way or that way, or to sell with these value props, or you know to the, with with some different approach. And, and where it works, we build on it. Where it doesn't, we learn from it and, and we kind of move on. And and that part um, of a startup is actually one of the most fun things for me personally. And I, I did nothing but startups as well. <laughs> did you run into one where it was just? It just didn't work where either the product was too early or too late or too expectations were too yeah. high where it was priced wrong or going after the wrong I mean, people. Using those sort of um, categories, I'd say every one of them. Right. I mean, cause like there it's, it, there is always something, right. It, it's almost impossible um, that everything's going to go right. And the tendency is for more things to go wrong. But, but I do think that, and I've been lucky and I've been, I've been fortunate that most of those startups had a really solid concept to take to market and it was a matter of packaging it. And, and I would say this as well, sometimes success happens in places you don't, you don't expect it to. So um, I can remember a firm I worked for years ago, they had a particular solution that they sold the telecom companies. It was um, revenue insurance and fraud management, which for your telecom listeners, they'll know exactly what that is. Most people won't. And, and what, what happened was um, we found that the market was saturated for those products. And um, most of the, and actually this was, this is where I was a little bit fortunate in being creative. We wound up closing deals that were completely outside of those use cases. So the company had at its core, a great analytical solution that could take massive amounts of data, transform it into something meaningful and actionable. The product was built to find revenue assurance and fraud. You could feed it any sort of data and you could ask it any sort of questions and it would give you really good answers. And so we sold it to companies to answer totally different questions. And so based on that, the company you know, was able, they still had stayed with their core, but they were able to pivot into other analytical areas as well. So, so it's, it's not always a straight line, I think is, yeah. is the answer to, to your question, at least in my and, experience. And that's brilliant because I, I, that's what I saw a lot of. You know, you go to the sales enablement presentation after they hired the 10 reps and they say this is the market this is the value prop this is why they buy it and then you go out in the field and it's like that's not why they care it's something else everybody already bought this from somebody else right <laughs> or you sit down with your engineer and it's like well what can this do oh it can do this it can do this it can do this well let's talk about that then and see how we can get a connection with that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's really where kind of the initial, you know, it's it's whether you're coming in to do a pitch or whether you're coming in to have a conversation, right? And I and I, I know you you've talked about this many times, right? It's it is it's just the mindset that you come in with. Am I like am I coming in to hear about like what's important to somebody or am I just coming in to, to talk about what I've got? And 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 there's room for both. Um, but you got to start with what's important to the to the to the other to the person sitting across the table from you, and if you can establish trust and really learn that and, and find that you have a solution, you know, to that to address that challenge or that objective or whatever else, 
that's how you get off to the best start. Uh, and, and that's where, I mean, that's, that's really where I've seen, you know, you're, you're not competing on price. You're not competing. You can't compete on trust, right? I mean, like, do I believe this person and this team is going to deliver for me? How can, how can you compete on that? If you know that one team, if you're confident in one group and not another. And which sales situation or company best matched your skill? And maybe give us a little journey there. Yeah. So, okay. So I would, I would say this, the, the cyber company. So, so I I spent almost 20 years in the telecom industry and selling to the telecom industry. And when I pivoted to cybersecurity, I guess it was about seven or so years ago. um, And then this was this solution that was way ahead of its time, super complicated. It was, but it was amazing. Like, I mean, like, it completely resonated with my, you know, my inner nerd that <laughs> that that could relate to this like super advanced uh, mathematics and these approaches. So, so that company, um, I mean, it, it wasn't a straight line, but the company, you know, ultimately got acquired. Ultimately, won major government contracts, a bunch of contracts in sort of the commercial space as well, and 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 really competed uh, against um, some other some other tools that were a little bit more uh, mainstream. So, so in terms of what, you know, what I learned kind of going through that experience, um, it's, it's often hard. I mean, you, you never know what you're going to get to, right? I mean, you know, that, uh, that, that company was probably, and that product, it may have been the most difficult to sell um, in, 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 in my personal career, but somehow it was the one that I gravitated the most towards because even though it was tough to sell and it was tough to sell because it was so far ahead of what people were ready for the premise of it was so strong. I mean, like I philosophically believed that there was no better way to solve this problem than the way that this company was undertaking it. And so, so that, that part for me, um, you know, I don't know, that, that was, that was kind of the, 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 the one that I look back on it could have turned out a little bit better, um, you know, in terms of uh, the, the exit that that company had, but in terms of what they were doing, they were, they were really breaking new ground and it was exciting to be part of that. And <clears throat> that excitement that helped you get into new accounts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, so definitely. Right. I mean, so, so you can't, well, I, I, I don't want to make any absolute statements here. Um, it's really hard to, go in to an account and be promoting something unless you fundamentally believe in it. I mean, and, and there's, and and I guess there's, there's different, there's different levels, right? I mean, so earlier in my career, I was the sales director who was coming in and usually with a sales engineer and and pitching these ideas and and the sales engineer would do most talking. I mean, you know, that, that person knew the ins and outs way better than I ever, ever could as a, as a sales director, but, but then pivoting to sort of more leadership roles in the future, you know, you're, you're not coming in to do the pitch. You're coming in to, to give assurances in terms of why it's going to work and how, you know, and, and this only stands, I think, to reason most projects are going to, especially if they're complex projects, they're going to experience setbacks. Like there's going to be unexpected stuff that happens. It's just the nature of, of, you know, doing hard stuff. And so, Am I picking a partner that's going to stand by me? You know, when when those gaps form, uh, are we going to work together? Are we going to are we going to be at odds? And and oftentimes, and you know, I, I think partly because I I lived for a little bit of a uh, of a time on the project delivery side, you know, knowing how those situations can be handled and 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 knowing what matters to customers, right, uh, would would help me to you know sort of you know if there if there were doubts put their mind at ease and, and just show that there was executive support, you know, behind a, a project or a client or whatever. And what skill or ability do you think separates the best salespeople that you've either worked with or observed from the good salespeople? Mm. Yeah, that's, um, that's a great question. So I would say that it is a commitment to transparency, right? And so, so we are, you know, as uh, being part of a sales team, sales organization, right? You want to win. I mean, you, you wouldn't be in the role if you weren't competitive and wired to win, right? But there, there's, 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 there's a line there. Um, you know, it's going to sound paradoxical. Like, you know, most of us that have especially been in sales leadership roles, you know, we have had enough experiences to walk with a bit of humility, right? I mean, like we, we, we've, 
done some stuff, some good stuff, hopefully uh, learned some things, but we haven't learned everything, right? And there's always some perspective that can be gained uh, from another person. But, but fundamentally, you know, you've got to be able to straddle the line of like, you know, how am I going to market? Am I, am I, uh, am I being forthright and honest with my clients and my prospect about, you know, what this is going to look right, like here? Nobody wants to scare off customers, but by setting reasonable expectations, everybody feels more confident and comfortable. And I, and I do think that, you know, sometimes there's a, there's a culture where, you know, we want to get the deal. We don't want to talk. We don't want to ask the hard questions. We don't, we don't want to, we don't want to uh, take the risk of, of bringing up something. I'm hearing that, the answer. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so, and so you've got to ask those tough questions. You've got to be there. And, and actually there's so much confidence that is from the customer's perspective that is gained in talking through those tough questions. What if this happens? How are we going to handle it? Oh, this guy actually cares. He's, you know, like, They've seen this before. They've done this before. They know what the risks are. This is why we can trust them, you know, to navigate this tough road with us. And and I, I think that is that confidence and that ability to just be just be straight up and honest and and really have a have a a, a really you know honest conversation uh, with a buyer is is one of the best things I think that you can do. Um, and 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 also just being humble enough to know that you know, you don't always know all the answers. Uh, and, and, and I think being open to, you know, hearing a different perspective, um, always helps as well. Two things. So I think that's a great point because a lot of us don't ask those questions. Like, what do you think your manager is going to think about this? How is this going to impact the CEO? What do they care about here? Right, right, right. Where's this on their priority list? That is the key one right there, right? And, and particularly now, and look, let's face it, we're heading into a bit of a period of, you know, economic uncertainty, at least, right? There's going to be more competition for those budget dollars. You've got to have good answers to those questions. And, you know, the projects that, you know, are meeting strategic objectives or save money, particularly in this business climate, those are going to be the projects that are the solutions that get funded. And, and if you if you don't have a strong answer, if you're not asking the question of like, hey, who's who's going to say yes to this and what's going to make them say yes? And, you know, what what internally are we competing against um, that that may look even like a better investment? You need to know those things when it comes to your to your forecasting, particularly. Yeah. And I think we don't I think the question's going through our head, but we don't want to hear the answer. We're, we're hoping that it'll just slide right through. Yeah. But that's where the deals die is when the people who don't understand it just put it on the list of good ideas for next year. Yeah. <laughs> that's the operative term there, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Hey, this has been a great conversation. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing now and how people can get in touch with you. Yeah, this is great, Brian. Thanks so much. And so you can find me at on LinkedIn. Uh, and and I, I I'd like to say that I'm I'm probably the only Joe Kiriakos that exists on LinkedIn. Uh, so you can you can certainly find me there. And then in terms of what I'm working on, I mentioned at the beginning that I'm looking uh, that I'm, I'm I'm literally just getting started with uh, with a fractional CRO sort of consulting business. And the whole goal there, and, and this kind of stands to reason, right? Having worked with so many early stage startups. Um, being able to help a few different companies uh, go to market, doing it cost effectively, um, helping them to maybe uh, make quicker decisions on how they may do their tooling, uh, how they may set up, you know, their their CRMs, how they may do their marketing outreach, what guerrilla marketing efforts they may choose to undertake that are going to work, uh, you know, for their buyers and for their industries. So, so I'm 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 just getting that started uh, over the next uh, few weeks over here. And certainly, if anybody is curious or wants to learn a little bit more or found any of this stuff insightful or helpful, I'd love to be in touch uh, with any of the, any of your listeners.